Hi, this is Professor Zygmunt again with CTS 560 Online. I'd like to show you a little bit more about the capabilities of the Gauss View graphical user interface for manipulating the structures of molecules because you'll need to use this in the assignment this week, the part of it specifically that deals with the structure of ethane and also in future assignments. So I'm logged in right now uh, through the NX player to S11. Of course, your machine will be M1, M2, or M3. So let me open up a terminal. And then uh, to build a molecule, we're going to type the SSH minus Y command and connect to N0. And then from N0, we can run Gauss View. <clears throat> so to build a molecule, once again, we'll start with the element box. And when you click carbon, which is actually the default, there are many different types of carbon. We want to use the carbon tetrahedral because ethane is C2H6 and is basically two methane molecules put together like this. So let me enlarge this just a little bit by right-clicking and uh, dragging downward. So the molecule is a little bit larger and you see it kind of moves off to the side. So there's a button over here called recenter or center in Gauss view and that moves the molecule back to the center. Now, of course, I can always increase the size of the window, and that helps too. And that may actually be a little bit too large, so let me resize it downward. All right, now I'd like to create C2H6, so what I want to do is replace one of the carbon, one of the hydrogen atoms with a carbon, and if I click on this, I get it right there. And now I'll be able to show you using the Gauss view uh, window the difference between eclipsed and staggered ethane, which are the two kinds of conformations of ethane that are referred to in this week's homework assignment. So using the left mouse button, if I click and drag, and then orient the molecule so we're viewing along the carbon-carbon bond axis, then you can see that this is the staggered arrangement. Because when I'm looking along this axis, I can see all six of the hydrogen atoms they are actually staggered from one another so that none of them are in front of one another. The eclipsed version has the three hydrogens on the end rotated by 60 degrees so that they line up in front of the three hydrogens on the other end of the ethane molecule. And in just a moment, I'll show you how to do that. First of all, though, let's go to View and Display, uh, actually View, and then if we click Symbols, you'll be able to see symbols for the atoms. And that can be very handy, especially when you have a complicated molecule and you want to make sure that you know uh, the identities of all the atoms. So that's a useful tool. And uh, now there are several different ways of changing the structure of a molecule. Oops, because I still had the carbon atom selected, I clicked with the left mouse button in the blue window and I got another uh, methane molecule. Clearly I don't want that. The nice thing is under Edit, there's an Undo button. And so the last thing I did goes away. What I want to do now, so that I don't make that mistake again, is go over and click the Inquire button. And the Inquire button then sets me up so that what I, the next thing that I might want to do, let's say, is determine the carbon-carbon bond distance. So if I click on those two atoms, I get 1.54 uh, as that bond distance. And that's the molecule builder built that kind of a structure in. And when I click on the blue with the left mouse button, then those two highlighted carbon atoms go away. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So there are three primary ways of changing the uh, structure of molecules. And this first tool right up here <clears throat> is the modify bond tool. And so if I click on that and then click on two atoms with the left mouse button in succession, I get this slider window where I can either uh, move the slider to change the atom distance, or I can type in a number into the window below. Now, there's an option with atom 1 and atom 2. Uh, I, can, I can, if I grab the slider and move it, you'll see the two atoms move so that they get further apart, but they're both moving. And so sometimes I might not like that to happen. So let me, first of all, let me cancel so that nothing there has taken effect yet. And I'll go back and click the two carbon atoms. Now let's say that I want to move atom 1 on the left, but not atom 2. So if I click Fixed, then atom 2 will not move. And so now if I use the slider button, only atom 1 will move. You can see it moving further away and then moving closer. 
So that's how to use the modify bond tool. And if I if I clicked OK, then it would save the file with that new carbon-carbon distance. But I don't want to do that, so I'm going to cancel because I want to show you another tool. The next tool over is the modify angle tool. All right. So then if I click on that, and now what I need to do is highlight three atoms in succession. And now I get a similar kind of window that allows me to rotate those atoms in order to change the bond angle. So you can see the bond angle here between the one, two, and three atoms is a little bit more than 90 degrees. In fact, it's about 109 degrees. Uh, so once again, I have this option. Let's say that I want to move atom one without moving atoms two or three. So then I'll go over here. Atom two is already fixed. Atom three, if I fix that. Now, when I move the slider bar, I will only move atom one. Atom one will be moved so that that angle increases or perhaps decreases. I might have reasons for thinking that the structure that I really want uh, has a different angle than the one that the program uses by default. Okay, so that's how to modify a bond angle. And once again, I'll cancel. Those are pretty intuitive. But there's one other way that we can alter the structure of a molecule, and that is the next choice over here, which is the modified dihedral angle. And dihedral is a fancy word. Another way of talking about this angle is to call it a torsion angle or a twisting angle. And there's a nice description of all three of these structural features, the bond length, the bond angle, and the dihedral angle in chapter four of your textbook. But let me also show you here how to do it because this is what you'll need to do to take what we have here is staggered ethane and rotate these three hydrogens on the end so that it becomes eclipsed ethane. So what do I want to do? Well, here's a dihedral angle. You have to click four atoms in succession. So let me start with this one. One, and then the second one is the carbon, the third is the other carbon, and the fourth is the hydrogen on the opposite side. <clears throat> and you see that the angle that is defined by those four atoms is a torsional angle or a dihedral angle of just about 60 degrees. Now, how, how does that happen? Let me rotate this. The way to interpret this angle is to realize that what it is is the angle that you would have to rotate the bond 1, 2. Imagine that there's a stick connecting those two atoms, which is shown in the diagram, that we're going to rotate that stick about the axis defined by atoms 2 and 3 in order to get it into the position so that it's directly in front of the bond between 3 and 4. All right, so right now, there's a roughly 60 degree difference there. I'm going, to, I'm going to choose to keep atom 4 fixed here. And so by moving the slider bar, let's say I decrease this angle, what's going to happen is the three atoms, those three hydrogens, are going to rotate. And if I were to drag this down exactly to 0, whoop, that's too far, OK? If I drag it down directly to 0, and there it's hard using the slider bar to get it to be exactly 0, if you really want it to be 0, the best thing actually to do is go into the window and type 0 point, in this case 0, 0.00. And now if I click OK, the molecule has permanently been changed into what is called the eclipsed conformation. And I think you can see now, looking along the carbon-carbon distance, why we call that eclipsed, the eclipsed form of ethane. Because if I look along the carbon-carbon bond, I can only see three of the hydrogens because each of them is eclipsing the hydrogen on the other side of the molecule. So that's how you will create the eclipsed version of ethane. And now you need to save it uh, to an input file. Remember how to do that. Again, we go to the Calculate button, click Gaussian. All right. And the job type, again, in the assignment, we want to do an optimization plus a frequency calculation method. Uh, let's, let's say that we're going to do the calculation that uses the ab initio uh, version of quantum chemistry, which is the Hartree-Fock method with the 321G basis set. We'll talk more about what these things actually mean uh, in subsequent weeks, but for now, uh, let's just leave it like that. The singlet is indeed the correct spin state because all of the electrons are paired up. Each spin up is paired with an opposite spin down. Additional keywords, we will continue to use pop equals full, even though that's not the default, uh, for the title. 
All right, we're going to say something like C2H6. Uh, what would that be? Opt, optimization. And then the method is Hartree Fox slash 3-21G. All right, so something like that. Oh, but I better say something about what form this is. This is the eclipsed version. So E C L I P S eclipsed C2H6. Optimization is the kind of calculation, and then HF321G. So we go on to link zero, and we want to use again a C2H6 underscore, I'll call it ECL for eclipsed underscore HF321G, and then uh, dot CHK, because it'll that adds the correct suffix. Once again, we've got two processors on the machines that you'll be using, so NPROC is two. And general, I like to get rid of the right connectivity. Everything else we can leave as is. So now we will submit. We must save the file. Sure, we'll save the file. Uh, I want to save it in my CTS 560 folder, and I'll, I'll just put it right here because I've already done this calculation, so I don't need to do this. But just to show you again how you would do this, C2H6 underscore ECL underscore uh, 321G. And then dot, well, uh, this will put the dot com suffix on there, so I don't need to do that. So if I click save, submit the following to Gaussian. Once again, remember, we don't want to do this, not on the N0 node. You're going to do that on your individual nodes. Um, so when I do that, cancel, and we're finished. So let's take a quick look. Uh, CD is CTS 560 to get into my directory here. Ha, and there's the file right there. So if I uh, type gedit in order to look at the file just to make sure everything is what I expect. All right, there's the file. Oh, there is that one thing that I asked you to change in earlier calculations. After the pound sign, put in a P for profuse output. Uh, then you can see you have, oh, this window is a little bit narrow. Some of the lines wrap around to the next line. So let me open up this window, and there we now see uh, in the way that it actually looks to the computer, all of these input file designations and the quantities that appear here are the bonds, which is what B stands for, the bond lengths, A is the bond angles, and then D are the dihedral angles that connect all of these atoms that tell us exactly where they're located and that more importantly tell the program where they're located. So having made that change, I'm going to click Save, and then we're ready to run the calculation. So that's how to use the Gauss View Editor to make changes in molecular structures when we want to create certain kinds of conformations. And you'll be using this quite a lot in uh, the following assignments as well as in this week's assignment. I hope that's helpful. That's all for now.